welcome nana here and then uh, in this video we are going to see about a back to back buy so let me first just, uh, demonstrate the process and then afterwards i will not go into the setups and then tell you what are the things i have done also so we're going ahead now so let me go there and then let us now create a sales order i'm not going to press sales order so you go to the order management you go to the order management and then go to the order management and then let us now create a sales order please. So click on create order. I'm not creating a sales order. First, I choose the business unit. There's one business unit, and then I will now put the ready-made customer called computer services in the You write the four letter kilogram automatically, and I can choose it. I need to be coming. You can choose it. And that will also populate the bit of combat. So that's very important. So I have the ready-made item available here as a big BDB item. So T zero four is not coming. <clears throat> so I will now put some commodity here, and I have already given a, all items price of one dollar. So because of which it is not coming. So all items price is one dollar. So it's not coming. I will now go for thirty one commodities. The pricing you already seen about how to give the all items price as well as the individual prices. So accordingly, do it now and do that. In in fact, reality you have to give the actual prices in the price list. Also. And then one more thing is what go to the actions and go to the new pricing strategy and segment. So here, your pricing strategy and segment has to be. We are now working on the corporate segment price of time. So corporate price, so the visions one, we are now getting it. So I also told you about how to bring hours of time. By reducing the precedence, you will be getting hours of time. So since I'm working on vision, I'm accepting this. Then go to this. And then if you don't give the supply, how the uh, error will come, that also is demo, demo now. So I'll now put the arrows from where we are going to ship it. So let me submit the order. So now I will now put the sales order number over here. The order is now getting submitted. It will be coolly progressing on the workflow actually, on a back-to-back -back buy. <clears throat> on a back-to-back -back buy, it will be going. So it is nine seven four six zero. And then uh, we are not enabled any approvals now, fine. So it will be going to processing only. Go to actions and then go to switch to full view from back. You know, have a look at it. So go to the fulfillment lines and then click on the do number. So go there, click on the do number. So the do number is available again. Okay. Click on the do number. It will now go into it. On the fulfillment lines, we are going to go there. You can also do order fulfillment. The generic process is now fine. Sometimes uh, people would have customized it. And then I also taught about how to, uh, what happens, I bypass the customization. So click on the operation. <clears throat> so order fulfillment, generic process is now fine. So it is now scheduling is complete. Supply request is not done. So the system has now given a supply request. So it says what the supply request is complete. <clears throat> Make it paper. Supply request is complete. Now the past task is going to run. Oh, fine. It will now get completed because there is no uh, geo party uh, in this one now. And so it will not have any problem. It will be getting completed. So now it has now gone to waiting shipping. So click on refresh. So it has now gone to waiting shipping. And then let us now go, there, go to the fulfillment lines. Go to the fulfillment lines. And then have a look at the supply order number. Go down, go down, go down. So the bottom, what happens is getting a supply order number as well as the supply status actually. So it takes some time to update it now. So click on the refresh. <clears throat> so once when it is done, you can now see the supply order number as well as the supply status coming up over here. So click on refresh. <clears throat> so we wait for some time till it comes. Up. So awaiting supply has come, the supply order number is yet to come up, right? Don't come. So once when it is come, it is now interface to supply chain orchestration. From there, the input, which is now coming in, will be diverted to a buy it. So there are three outputs are possible, basically. One is what you are make, buy, and transfer. So it will be interfacing into purchasing because the GOP has been written only for purchasing it. So click on refresh. So sometimes what happens, it takes a longer time. So what you do is, you know, right click and then duplicate. You know, go there straight away. So here we are now. Asking for how much 31 quantity is now, right? 31 quantity is one. And then this is the order number now, right? So 97, <coughs> what's called? The order number is here, 97460. So here we'll now go to the supply chain, exactly. So I'll now go to the supply chain execution and then go to the supply orchestration. Right? Supply orchestration, I go there. So in the supply orchestration, I'm there. <coughs> so go there, click on it. Click on the task carousel again. And then click on the manage supply lines and then let me query on the item actually. So if, if it comes, we can even click on the what's called here itself. Okay? 
So if uh, the order number comes in, we'll again take a check now for it to come. Refresh it. So order number is there to combine. Sometimes it doesn't come very easily. We'll not go there and then we'll not query on that. It starts with the T04 is the one when we have a tap. Starts with the zero and then make a search. It is a back to back by item. So this will be the latest one, maybe, and the last, the top, top one, right? I will not click on it. Right? It is now 31 quarters when I click on the uh, number one. My supply chain orchestration number, I'm going to click on that. So it is now 31. So, it's not, so the only thing is there, it didn't come at all. And then select the line, and then you can now see there are three recommendations for this one. The purchase requisition is now created. So you can now see on the make, there won't be anything. And then on the transfer also, there won't be anything. So this is the buy, what happens if you go to the buy, you can now see the things, the orchestration plan, if you want to see, you can now see what are the things which are created. So the purchase requisition is now created. Purchase order, reservation, put away, fulfillment, everything has come one by one. <clears throat> so we'll now go to the execution documents and then have a look at it. Click on the execution documents. We will now see what are the things. This is the execution document. For 31 quantities, the PR is now created. So let me go there and then I take 204213. Right click on the duplicate. We'll now go to the purchase requisition area. I will now go to the process requisition of the procurement. Right? I will now go to the procurement. I will now go to the procurement. Click on it. I will now go to the process requisition. Right? <laughs> and go to the purchase orders. And from there, I will go to the process requisition. The purchase orders I'm going over there. And then let me go and then process the requisition. So click on it. Go there. And then click on what process requisition. And then query this number. Right? The number is what? 204213. So go there. I will now go to the requisition number. So requisition number 204213. And then buyer is what? It's okay. We'll now remove the buyer. Remove the buyer. Because sometimes what happens is the buyer may give a wrong entry. Right? So we are removing it at the going. So it's not coming. So if you click on the I icon, if you click on the I icon, it is not saying. The, it will not say requisition goods are to fulfill a customer sales order. So nobody can even do it now. It gets automatically resolved for us. Click on that one. It gets resolved. And then go there, select it, and then click on the add to document. Better. I'm not going to add it. Had I automated it, then the purchase order would have been created. The PRTP automation I have not done for this item at all. So it is not getting created. So I'm not manually doing it. So I don't have any source agreement also. I click on okay. this page, just give up okay. Since the source agreement is not there, go down. And then click on create. And I'm going to create a PO. So here I have not given what the supplier name. So the next page you have to give it up. And supplier name has to be given on this page itself. So I have not given it. So it doesn't matter. On the next page, you can very well give it. So we are now creating a PO document. And then for the 31, it's now showing you the price is two dollars. Point six two is coming now. So it goes to the next page in which we will now be completing the purchase order process. <clears throat> so creation of that thing is happening. So since we are doing it for the first time on this, now it takes some time now. <clears throat> so the document is now created. I will now take a copy of this document. Of the, this is the purchase order document. This is the PR actually. This so the PO. PO is there. So click on OK and then we'll now populate this up there. Okay, it is already coming. It is coming because on the what's called on the GOP area, we have already put the supplier name to whom it has to go. That's why it's coming. So there outside we don't have to go. So the GOP area, I will not show you but where exactly we have set up the supplier actually. I will not go there. Everything is there now. And then I will not go to the schedules and then I will not ensure that you have what given the need be date. So need be date is what 16th is the one point. So uh, whatever the requested date, which has come from the sales order, will be getting populated here as a need be date actually. Um, go there, click on it. Go on and see the need be date. The need be date is what? And I was saying 16. Right? The requested date, date and the promise date, both are getting populated automatically. And then go there, click on it, edit. It's now coming from the sales order, remember. So select it and then uh, click on edit. Now. Go to edit it. And then we'll know how to edit it. <clears throat> so once you're edited, one of the receipt routing is a must actually. So the standard receipt routing is coming. So it will be coming either from the supplier or otherwise from the managed receiving parameters. Actually, if the supplier is missing, it will not pick up from the managed receiving parameters. So everything is okay. If I click on okay now, and then we will now validate the purchase order first of all for all the entries and good actions. And then we'll validate. Validating it, it will see the lines, the schedules, and distributions are all in order actually. 
it will not verify and then tell you okay it's okay and then i will not click on the manage approvals whether anybody has initiated any approvals or not and that i have seen otherwise i had to bypass the approval now so let us let it first of all validate and then i will not click on the manage approvals to see whether anybody has initiated any approvals or not right uh, otherwise let us let it go there click on it in the meantime what happens i will not go to the place right so it's fine i will not go to the manage document approval and then have another the manage approvals ूल <coughs> You've got uh, so many things. Oh God, everything is enabled. I don't want to touch this at all. Very, very bad. I will not choose this one. Head uh, uh, in the terms, uh, terms of rule seal. To we'll not see whether anything is there or not. Uh, we have a medium risk, and then document total is not fine. Not fine. And then we also I will not use it. Etc. Thing. Cancel. I will not use the third one. Not fine. Terms. And then I will not go there. Click on it. Not see. Nothing is there. Fine. We will not configure it. The third one. We will not configure it. And I will not say. <coughs> So, it. so somebody makes it. What happens? I will not make mine is highest priority. But the rule always applies. Don't do it. Okay, okay, okay. I will not make it as automatic. Okay, click on add action. Then let me make it as automatic. <coughs> automatic. So click on okay. Now it's automatic. So click on save and then we will not deploy. No getting deployed. So click on next. In the meantime, what happens? Maybe you throw some error. So many things are there right? because of that. So many things are coming up there. Procurement manager, everything is not going on. So we will not give a back, no fine. Give a cancel, and then we are not deploying it, no fine. So it is not deployed. We will not enable the line to whatever you have done. No, we will not disable every other thing. And remember, for every stage, you do not use more than one participant. And then I will show you about how the errors are coming. So uh, there is not a kind of here in the terms they are not use two participants. So uh, in the live one, we don't do it. Now. Otherwise, you have to go to the BPM and then do it. If you have, uh, approval requirements are very complex, you go to the BPM and then do it. So go there, click on it. And then click on disable. So this is the one we have created. Let me know that. Click on it. And then not disable it. Work in a very proper manner, methodical. Right? Otherwise, it will all be giving you lots of problems. <laughs> and that's it. Right? So only one is required. There is an automatic approval. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Hello. Go to the edit document. And then click again on save. And then again click on the manage approvals. Manage approvals. So it will be done. So it has to show you. Manage approvals. I'm clicking on it. So it will not show you as automatic approval. <coughs> so this one six four three three zero. Yes, we'll be getting approved now. Not any problem. So it will not show only an application developer because we are not disabled every other thing. So we made only this now. <coughs> so it has to show me as application developer, and then we will not submit. Approval. So once when the PO is approved, we have to now receive it. The approved people will also be up, appearing on the this one. Right? On the orchestration plan, if you go there, it will put a tick mark on the purchase orders also. Once when done, it will put a tick mark on the right? application developer. So right? click on submit. You are submitting it, so that it will be getting approved. Now we can receive it through supplier portal. The supplier can even create a ASN and then do it now. Right? So since we are not going into that part, so what we will do is <clears throat> the document is now submitted. We will not go and make a physical receipt. So the document is submitted. So I will not give a right click and then I will not duplicate. I'll go there. <coughs> and here in this place, there is no still what is no saying what awaiting shipping only. Fine, no saying awaiting shipping only. So once when you receive it, it will now come as what goods available over here. The supply chain will now become goods available. You will now see what is there. Orchestration has come on off because of the pressure. Sometimes it doesn't even come on. I don't know why it's so. It's not even coming. Afterwards, once when it is received the inventory from where we are going to ship it, it will now become what goods available for us only. Point. I'm going to close place, and then we'll now go to what done, and then we'll now uh, on the new one we will now make what result. Click on it. Click on the home icon. You go to the supply chain execution. You go to the supply chain execution, and then I go to the inventory management. Click on the inventory management. <coughs> you click on it. Go there. That we know what what zips. What are the zips? And then click on the receive expected shipments. And then I will not put the purchase order in there. And go there. 
I don't take up much of that one. It is only a point. You know, going to make a result. It is a standard result, and so what happens? We have to make a gate result as well as what happens. We have to deliver it also. So go there. Go to the purchase order number. Paste it. We have to give it a name. Then click on search. Search it for it. Then select and make a gate result. And then the meeting will also see whether in the, in the supply orchestration time you are refreshed. The purchase order has been given a tick mark on it. It also gets delayed when now you call the purchase order. And then if you go to the execution documents, they don't show you all the documents. This is the what's called the purchase requisition. This is the purchase order number. Everything is shown here. No space. None of the expectation is there. So we'll now select it and then we'll now review it. What is it? We're going to make a gate zip. So while you are performing a gate zip, you will not be able to populate the sub inventory over here. Subunit is possible, possible no? yeah, we are reviewing it. <coughs> Quantity is what? Uh, I will not say 31 now. 31 is already. <coughs> okay. So click on create. Okay, is it? So you're not making gate is it? This is the Calvin drop. He may be a different uh, what's called. He is a purchase officer actually. But in fact, what happens is uh, the warehouse man will be receiving it actually. But since for the training purposes, we are not given all the powers to everybody actually. So anybody can do anything. In reality, it is not so. The purchase officer will not receive. So we have to put the appropriate role to the appropriate people. But click on something by which the GRN gets created. And then, then we have to go on the delivery. All right. So 51897 is the GR number. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, we go there and then uh, 51897. Thank you. Now, we have a put away for this. Click on that. So go to the put away. And then we will now query the GR number. <coughs> Five one eight nine seven. Yeah, and, uh, click on search now. Right? So the 30, 31 gold is will be coming from the house. Search it and then click on put away. They're going to put on put away. Now here we can give the subunit. But you're putting away the subunit is a mandatory one. So I know put it on the stones now. Right? So while gate receipt is not possible, whereas while you're delivering it, we have to populate the subunit. Thank you for submit now by which the completion. Now what happens is the sales order will be saying goods available. The sales order will be saying the goods will be available, and then you can also say the put away transaction is completed. If you go to the manager supply here, also what happens if you go to the orchestration plan, you can see the reservation and then put away everything would have all the two would have been complete. Not only it is also reserved, also you can refresh now, you'll be getting reserved also. So, reservation done, put away is also done, and it will not take some time. So, once it is done, what happens is only the fulfillment has to be completed. You go to the sales order, you cannot see in the bottom goods available will be completed. Click on refresh. The goods available information. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Awaiting supply. So it is not an updated number. It takes some time to prepare. <sighs> so no man, awaiting supply. So we'll not see whether any yeah, ESS job is running or not. I'm not sure about it. Kind of on. Put away. <clears throat> so you know that. Now go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process. And then see whether any ESS job is running for this or not. I don't think it'll run. <clears throat> Because only for uh, the sales or a shipment, the send shipment advice will be running. And for an RMA, send receipt confirmation has to be done manually. And so, perform refresh. Okay. So, actually, I think uh, nothing is ready. <clears throat> so, you don't go to the place here now. So, this is the one managing operation. I will not give it. The put away should have been completed. Now, have to see. The put away has to get completed. So the put away is also there. The fulfillment is only remaining. Now go to this place, and then here it has to show me as what goods are available. Now. So click on refresh. So go down. Sometimes what happens is that this uh, information is now getting delayed. So we will not try to ship it directly. No problem. Right click and then duplicate. We will not ship the product directly. So I'm not getting it. <coughs> and we will not ship the product. We will now go to the what's called supply chain execution and we'll go to the what's called inventory management. So you will now go to the shipments and then query this. Click on it. So go to the place and then go to the shipments. In the shipments, go to the manage shipment lines. Shipment lines, what happens here? What is the order number? The order number is what? Uh, 97460 is the one. Go to this place. Okay, right. Uh, it's a almost the requisition here. So this is the one. <coughs> what number is nine seven four six zero? Nine seven four six zero is the order number. Another one and then make a search. Sometimes today you work, otherwise, what happens? You have to make it appropriate. So click on search number. Sometimes it works. It shows you the organization zero zero one. <coughs> it has to be zero zero one. 
I click on search bar. So we are searching for it. So once we search for it, it will show. <clears throat> if it has you know, sales order has sensed the goods is available. The sales order has to sense no, the goods is available. <coughs> the goods are available. And then click on refresh again. You see that the goods are available is coming up. Not this one. You know this place. And then I click on refresh. refresh. It has to show me as the goods are available. It's still showing the waiting supply in this place. What about it? not coming? So let me change it to what? Today and the next seven days. So I'm going to make a change and then see it. 97, 97, 460 is it? 97460 is the correct one. And then click on search. <clears throat> so we have to see what it is actually needed on the next day. Actually, find the on search number. So we'll not see what when it is needed actually. So once when it comes, what happens? It will be coming ready for fulfillment actually. <clears throat> okay, so I'm working on the vision one now. So it's now working, working, working. And then probably it must have sensed the supply chain. <clears throat> the goods available might have been sensed actually. So then it will be ready for whatever. So we have pick release as well as ship confirmation. So we are going to launch the pick release. So once when you launch a pick release, what happens? You pick the move here is not come over here. The next thing I go to the action, you'll not see whether it has still sensed the goods available or not. So avoiding supply, come on, yeah, and click on pressure. Sales order updations are really very, very good. So I'm still showing you avoiding supply. So I'll now go there, I will not do it. Go to actions and then go to pick release. We are going to launch the pick release. So you can be creating a what's called a movement request. That is called a pick wave movement request that will be getting created automatically. So we already seen everything on the inventory, but how to do it now. So that will be getting created. <clears throat> and that, that will be allocated also. Allocated as well as it will be transacted. So the pick release as well as the pick confirmation process will be going together actually. Right. In inventory, we have seen that uh, we are not done the pick confirmation manually, but here it will all be automatic. For a sales order, it will be normally automatic. Unless otherwise you fiddled on the organization parameters that pick confirm is required. If you do it, then you have to do it manually. Otherwise, what happens? It will be going to stage. Right. The line will be going to stage directly. So go to actions and then give a save and close on this. Give a save and close on this. You're saving and closing. So it comes to the main line. Oh, you know. And then you can now see that it is now staged actually. 001 is R in which what happens at the beginning staged. And then now we are going to perform a ship confirmation. So once when the ship confirmation is performed, we can now see a final tick mark which is now coming on the fulfillment completion also. So the fulfillment completion also will be coming up all the way. So if you give a refresh, of that, is the inventory available has come over here. The inventory available has come, but this supply available, uh, the supply available is not exact, not it updated on this place. Yeah, it has to become a supply available, goods available rather. Click on refresh now, that is not it later. Some problems over here and there. But even then, it is now sensing the things and then it's doing it actually. So you know, refreshing it, go down, go down. It's still showing this now. If you go to this place, what happens? You can also see it's staged actually. And then a shipment number is auto auto created. When you click on it, and then when you click on the shipment number, you can go there. <clears throat> there is some issue on the updation of the sales order, otherwise, what happens? It's becoming popular. You can now go to perform a ship confirmation. So the pick release and pick confirm are completed because of which the line has got stitched. Now we are going to perform a ship confirmation. And everything, we've already seen everything. So all these things. In inventory, we were doing the pick confirmation manually. Here it is all totally automatic. Otherwise, you want for it will be automatic, and then you can even make it manual also. By putting a tick mark on the pick confirm required on the organization parameters. So I will not perform a ship confirmation. Click on ship confirmation. So once when you perform a ship confirmation, so the line will be going to ship that. It will not give a warning. Fine. It says that the weight and volume is not there. Fine. That is only required for transportation management. We can ignore the warning and then click on S and then go ahead. You know, because we can go ahead on this now. So once when you go ahead, it will be getting completed. And then you can now see the line status is shipped that. The line status will be shipped. Now, if you go on and see this, the send shipment advice will be running. Fine. That will be basically interfacing the shipping execution to order entry. The send shipment advice has to run. So once when that get completed, the order entry will be what happens? It will be uh, basically getting updated to what ship that ship confirmation documents is now running. So we are running, running, running. So the send shipment advice is responsible for it. This will be basically interfacing your shipping execution to order entry. And if it doesn't run, I will tell you what you have to do. If it doesn't interface it properly, then we have a super concurrent. So manage shipment interface. So that ESS job will now force all the things which are pending and then it will be interfacing it properly. Manage shipment interface. 
I'll tell you what, if this doesn't interface it to this one, it has to come to the ship actually. In this place, what happens? It has to come to ship now. In this place, it has to come to what? Ship now. Right. You know, see, at least the goods available is coming, coming, you know, wedding shipping is coming. Ah, it's not ship now. See? Okay. That means what? This concurrent has run perfectly. The ship, you know, that. So go there. Now, it will be going to awaiting billing also. Right. It will be shipped and then now what happens? If you refresh it, it will be going to awaiting billing. Right. It will be, the data will be pushed into the interface tables of AR actually. Thank you for refresh. It will be going to awaiting billing. Right. It will be going to awaiting billing. <laughs> it is now fulfilled actually. And then you, know, you go to the orchestration panel and see that almost everything is now complete. Up the, ship. the invoice has started now. The invoice has started. And then it will be going to awaiting billing also. And then if you go and then see on the orchestration plan, the fulfillment tick mark also will be coming on the supply orchestration of click on refresh. You'll be able to see that supply orchestration getting fulfilled. The fulfillment is also complete. So the score process is now fully complete. So the purpose of score, the supply chain orchestration is what? The incoming demand will be basically routed to either make or buy or transfer. And then once when the inventory is available on the destination organization, what happens? It will be getting completed. And then finally, here it is the sales order. It gets fulfilled also because the company, the customer's needs are also completed. It will be finally ending up on a fulfillment actually. So you know that. So score is now fully completed. So if you go to this place, it has to go to awaiting billing. When invoice is started, and then it will be pushing into the interface tables of AR actually. So it has to go on and see. Fine. Once when it is going to interface tables, yes, it has gone to awaiting billing. So now is that in the fulfillment status we will not see. Uh, it would have been changed actually, but oh God, it is still not updated. In the fulfillment status, you know that. You know that, you know that. Now, awaiting ship, oh, there is some problem because of which what happens, it's not getting updated actually. Uh, uh, it will all be coming properly. So, in your, in your. so, orchestration plan is almost complete. Okay? Uh, we have done it. So, it has gone to the awaiting. Right? Now, we have to push the data into the, we have to uh, pull, pull the data from the interface tables of uh, AR to the base tables of AR. So, what do you do? Long go that tomorrow. We will now run this. Uh, no, no, what import orders we are going to have? So, considering the process, we'll be running the import order. <coughs> import order. So, I will tell you the setup software is not right. Then you exactly follow as per that. That will be helping you by doing it. Right? Import order. So, take a look. It is the import order of auto in. I think it is the auto in. Once again, no more than how you get that. I made a mistake actually. We will not import orders now. So, it does not go to the OM worksheet now. We will not import orders. Import orders for purchasing actually. Uh, we have to run the what's called, if you see this, what I uh, uh, import order invoice. It is the import order invoice and not import orders. So the import order invoice. So, I was import order invoice. Import orders is for purchasing. So import order in the one factor order. Better kind of thing, right? You are going to run the import order in us. So the business unit is what? US one business unit. I'm now working on the new uh, vision actually. The transaction source is not the con contract management. You know, kind of Drop it down and then choose the distributed order orchestration. Distributed order orchestration, the one, right? You go and then choose this one. And then we can even specifically import it and go down. And then we'll not put the sales order number from this So we'll now go there and then how will it look like? The sales order number. <coughs> not how will it be? Right. 97460. So 974. And then if you give a tap, it will come automatically. The sales order number will become automatically over, not coming. So 97460. And then we'll not put it in my own. I thought that it will be having a validation of it, not having a validation. So for the specific order, what happens? We are going to pull it from the interface tables of AR to the base tables of factor also. And then the receivables period must be open, otherwise it will not work at all. I will not see whether the receivable period is open or not. But I will not. Because this is not completed, fine. Give a cancel and then we'll not have a look at the receivable period that is all open or not. I will not go to the what general ledger. So we have to go to the general ledger and then see it. So that is not added to this person at all. Right? GLA is a general accounting and we go to the period. So the roles must be properly added, otherwise, it will not be given up. We will not see whether the receivables period is open or not. It will not connect. So drop it down. I will not choose my BU. So I will not choose our BU. I will use one uh, business unit. Uh, use, use primary ledger. It's not a business unit, actually. The access it is what US primary ledger. Click on OK now. So keep on OK. Or it may not be this. Okay. So, no, go to this place. 
it may be different one not us primary ledger us primary is not coming so i will now use what uh, some of the thing uh, here i have put what us primary ledger that is not working so you know use the use a ledger set actually us ledger set i am going to talk about this ledger box and what <clears throat> so this procurement agent is not having a what are called data access for this not required so let alone provide the data access because of it is not coming so he is a procurement manager actually so give a tap so sometimes what happens the screen gets locked you know you want to right click on the duplicate you know you want to provide the data access for <clears throat> the main thing we'll now see the monitor process what is the status of it now the monitor process that is import on the invoice execution report will now have a look at it if it is all open it will be showing you proper effect or not will have a look at it there is no need to give any open period not so you can go down we'll now go down and then have a look at it so we'll now look at the output of it you can republish it so let us now have a look at it otherwise we have to open the periods and then again read and edit it now go to the pdf So we are not going to export it as a PDF. So we are not getting export. I will not click on that. It's called a hyperlink. So selected successfully process is also free. So that's it. that means what everything is on. The period is all open actually. No problem. Go on. Go on. It will say four lines. So invoice is coming. So it will not show you the currency on the screen. So create a transaction by currency. So invoice also create tax. Invoice only invoice. Number of invoices like this. It is along with the taxes and duties basically because of which is not coming. So it is two dollars thirty one uh, or one dollar. So we are given one dollar. So thirty one and then the remaining are taxes and duties. Actually. So it's all created. It goes there. So click on done. Okay, go there. So close it. Close it. And then you will now have a look at what you go to the receivables and then you go to the you know, transactions basically. So go there. Go to the it's called uh, billing. Okay, receivables and then go to the billing. Okay. <coughs> so you know, go to the billing and then look at the transactions. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now, so go to the manage transactions and then you know query for the what's called the yeah, sales order. Again, the sales order number is what? Is the nine seven four six zero is the sales order number? Okay. Now query for the nine seven four six zero. The reference number is nine seven four six zero is the one thing you have. And then uh, other things are not required. For such no point, the bill to customer is required. Okay. So the bill to customer is what uh, computer service needs. Com, but then you have to. So one of them is a mandatory one. Order the double star. One of them is a mandatory one. Fifty percent somewhere for the computer services and then for the sales order, we are going to query for the transactions. So the, it is now perfectly imported. Fine, that's correct. We now have a look at it. So we now go there. So select it and then click on what? You now click on the hyperlink on the transaction number. So the invoice is now created. The invoice is now created. Go down, go down, and then here we will see that is the one. Local one, uh, the thirty-one is coming, and then taxes and other classifications is not coming here. Now, find some where it is coming. I am not really sure, but anyway, yeah, it now shows you the tax of two point four two. Now, if you click on the tax, it will not show you the tax component. Also, the breakup of the tax components, it is the yesterday, yesterday, and then this tax, everything is there. There has been configured the vision of it, whatever stuff. And then we can even look at as what an image of it. View the image. Right? So, if you click on the view image, it is how it is going to be printed and then sent to the customer. So, click on the view image. You can even look and see. How it is going to be printed on some of the customers. Now in this place, what happens if you go there? The line set will have been closed actually. The line set will have because the invoice is created. Thank you, Mr. Prash. So it is the responsibility of every CSR to close all the lines actually. He has to close all the lines. So it's not done. So it's not built actually. So he has to close. And then he has to report to the management. But how many lines he has closed? Right. And then once when all the lines are closed, what he will do is he will now close the header also. So here it goes. Let's go ahead. Let's see if I can go ahead. Not required actually. <clears throat> We're not coming properly. But this is the problem. And then we go there. This is the image invoice. So this one. So you'll be having. Let us say it is for Reliance Industries. It will be Reliance Industries. The technical team will be configuring it very properly. And then it will be in a very attractive manner. Fine. With the logo of the company, the name of the company, address of the company. And then this will be formatted as per the end client's preferences basically. Whatever they want to. Do. So everything the technical will be doing it. And then it will be done. So this one. So the image or the invoice is not shown on here. So that. And now this activity is now complete. Fine. So I have told you we have to process the payments. I have already shown you about how to process the payments fine. for a credit memo as well as a debit memo in the previous session. Now and then up to trial balance we have seen already. Fine. All the things have been done. So we have now done it. And then we have created the receipt. And then afterwards we have done the credit accounting. And then finally we ran the trial balance also. 
of one block. So everything is now completed. Now, uh, this is also complete. Now, we have to go and then see what. Uh, uh, give it then, I'll come back now. So, and I'll come back. So, go we'll come to the main line. Now, the order is still saying processing. So, we have to close the order also. If all the lines are closed, we can very well pass the order. We close the order now and go to the monitor process. And then we'll run one more command. And click on the schedule new process. The ring will not find. It is called update close sales order. So, go to the update close sales order. And then you're going to close the header also. So we'll be closing the head also. Update close. So after this, I will not show you about how I have done it actually. Thank you for search for my update close. Ah. Update percentage. Close percentage. Thank you for search for that. The update close sales order. So now go that click on it. Now run it. Still okay. We'll now head it. So we are going to what happens is close the header actually. And, uh, I will now say H E D E R. And then I will now make the interval as what zero. Right? That will be immediately closing. So the entity is header, and then I'm going to close the header. So by which we can very well close the sales order also. So go on and query. Update and close the uh, order. So once when this gets completed properly, then what happens? You'll be able to see the sales order header getting closed. The header. You go on and refresh it and keep refresh it. The sales order header will be closed. Yes, it's closed. So all activity on the sales orders are complete. So the CSR, the customer service representative, is basically responsible for closing all the lines. And then after closing everything, the header also has to be closed. And then it will be reportable to the management about how many lines and how many headers he has closed. Because if a sales order may have 10 lines, out of which nine is closed, one is not closed, he cannot close the header. So he will be responsible for it now. His duty is to book the sales order. He, be, he acts as the, the front-end interface with the customer's actually. One with the management between management and the customers, he will be the yeah, what I call interface. Now we'll see about how uh, we have done this. Now, how have I done? So, I will not tell you the activity. You do it because I've already done it. And so, what happens? I will not do it again. I will not tell you about how I have done it. Actually. I will now go to the product management. I will now go to the product information management. And then, there, and then there, what are the first thing I did? So, any back to back. Fine. There are three types of back to back. One is a buy, one is a transfer, and one is a make. No, fine. I will now make one more video for uh, uh, transfer actually. Fine. I will now go there. Go to the browse items on this. On the browse items. <coughs> In the browse items, I go there. And then here, I will now query for my item. Fine. Because the T04. Let me take on search. Search for my item. And remember, if it doesn't come, the governance and consolidation has to be removed. Now. Otherwise, what happens? The PIM will be coming into picture now. Fine. So I have done it on the master, then I assigned the child. I go there. So I will now open up the master and then tell you what are the item attributes I have I applied a normal finished good template. And then afterwards, over and above, I made only one change on the specifications. I go the specifications. I made one change. So I go to the sales and order management. I just enabled the back-to-back as yes. That is the only thing I made. Apart, you apply a finished good template and then and then ensure that the order management transaction is enabled. And then similarly, what happens if you go and then see the invoice is enabled as well as the shippable is enabled. All these things must be enabled, right? Your template has to do all this. Right? So this is the one first activity. Right? So after having created the item like the assigned it also, right? So what I did is I went to the plan inputs. Right? I went to the plan inputs. And then I go to the what? Supply chain planning. And then go to the plan inputs. I go to the plan inputs. And then here I enabled the org for collection actually. I enabled org. I go to the what? Manage. So systems actually manage planning so systems. I go on there. The manage planning so systems I go on there. And then here I will now have to go for there are multiple so systems that are available here for a default one is OPS actually. And then if you know Oracle integration cloud, you can even mm -hmm. create multiple so systems on the top. I select it and then click on the manage organization list. And then click on the refresh organization list. And then if you see vision is already enabled. Zero zero if you put it and then enter number zero zero one zero zero two everything. Will be. So vision wise is all enabled actually. If I no need to do it, but if you're doing on your own, you have to enable it. You have to enable it. So I did. I was I was also doing on my own org also. And vision is okay, no problem. The only the master will not be enabled to the remaining child is okay. So give a cancel. <coughs> so this is done. So after having done this, what I did is, is already there. So I have not done anything at all there. Go to the collect planning data. So my item is created. Sorry, my item is created. So we have to collect the item actually. So, since we have already run the collection on a targeted mode, what you can do is 
you run once at least on a targeted right targeted mode and then bring everything over here you just play whatever you go there bring everything over here so once run the targeted mode for everything and then click on submit so it will take around 20 25 minutes approximately so uh, it's already done so what i did is i went there i will now go to what targeted mode only but here i collected only items on the reference data i didn't collect everything so only item is a new addition so the net change on the item will be coming here items can go and if it doesn't come then what you have to do no other go we have to come and then what happens run in a targeted mode the target mode for all actually right. this is the one i ran and the click on cancel so after having done the data collection what i did is i went to the gop area the gop setup has been there are three setups that required for one so here for example go that i will go to the order management and then go to the gop and then the global order policy i go there so in the gop area i have done all the setups gop area i go there in the gop area what it is manage atp groups i click on the manage atp groups so i created a supply chain atp actually t04 is a supply chain atp for that point i will search the supply chain atp has been identified for click on it and then edit i created the atp and click on plus and then wait here what happens it must be what happens the supply chain atp and not a infinite one right supply chain so the 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 radio button must be here now and then i enabled all the supplies and then i would have fulfillment as a demand right so it is not going to what balance the supplies against this demand and then if you know planning central uh, you can very well set it up now the planning central using it otherwise what happens you make this a user defined and then this also is a user defined and then give 50 50 50 fine that more than sufficient and then when you learn planning central they will not teach you a lot upon all these things now right so that will be so having done with the 50 50 with the user defined user defined i what i did is i go to the atp people assignments and then i included the or but organization added plus and plus and then added and then order or 001 or so this is a thing i did on the atp role now right? on the manage atp rules so on the manage atp rules on the manage atp rules i did this one by either cancel then afterwards i created two sourcing rules okay one more i created two sourcing rules after having done the manage atp rules i am now in the gop area i go to the manage sourcing rules and then i created two sourcing rules for this exercise so t04 let me put it now t04 this is for the buy actually so one is the global ship and if you go and see the global ship i put it i made this to a adaptive plus and anyway. so it has been made as a global and then the planning state is active right? the start date you are given and then here i am going to transfer to the customers from 001 or and then the allocation percentage is 100% rank is one multiple ranks remember only planning central can recognize otherwise the pure purchasing will not recognize multiple entries over here right okay? only planning central can do it okay? planning central can split everything so otherwise what happens the pure purchasing will not take only the rank one and then it will not process the 100% uh, orders to the particular person so it is a transfer from from this or point this is for the global ship the one i made it now okay. so cancel it and then afterwards i bid i go to the buy and then the buy what happens i do that click on edit now so i edit it and then we define that so i made a buy from the abc consulting on the particular site and then the ops and then you know 100% it is again global now and then you are planning active and when you give 100 the planning will automatically become active so t04 buy so having created these two what happens i went and then see what is our assignment set for our training actually for our uh, vision actually so i go there i will now go to the assignment set and then have a look at it and click on the name icon on the right top and then i will go to the fsm area now the fsm area is not available so because here id security manager is not being given to you now so that so there if you go on and see it is a global order promising is the assignment set which has been given now i will show you that right? global order promising set right so the assignment set msp default assignment set is the one on this the global order promising has been done so then what i did is i go there click on it the global order the third activity i done i go to the manage assignments at that point the manage so it is already pointing to what global order promising i will not go on and search for global order promising is the one which vision is using actually thank you for search now and then if you have any doubts you talk to find this one so msp default assignments at on the manage admin profiles on the manage admin profile we go there and then you look for the msp default assignments it will be pointing to this so here i went and then i added two lines whatever i had done <coughs> So let me go on and query on the global okay? There are multiple entries that I find. There's a vision one, so so many people may not do something. Well, go there. I will now go to the query by example, and then here I will now query the global one. Make it the global, and then make a search. Click on it, and then simply get the issue. It will not show you. So at the global level, the sourcing rule of all global ship. <coughs> this is one entry I added now. If it is already there, no need to add. Right? If you're working on different different organization, open the sourcing rule and then add your org over there. Right? Open the go to the manage sourcing rules and then add your org. please do not take one more entry over here then afterwards whatever i went to the item organization the highest level the item organization level 
and then i now put the item as what t04 t04 and i enter item organization the t04 and the double quote i am making bonus the one item organization 001 the item is what b2b buy and then the one sourcing rule the one also so having done these two things what happens i made one more collection actually <coughs> we had to make one more collection so these are three activities on the gob area <coughs> one is what manage adp rules and then one is what manage sourcing rules two rules two rules submitted and then after the manage assignments of the global order promising i have added these two rules actually and remember if already somebody has added you need not add you have only append your sourcing rules remember accordingly and whatever is there if you go to the sourcing rule and then if you query it if something is already there what you do is you go there and then in this place you go that is on by and then you come back now the next one for your item you are going to buy it from some other place add this as one more like like that you are doing so have a look at it then do optimize optimally do no fine you can also create a multiple things and multiple things you can also create for the training purposes in reality it won't be like this okay so you can also create one more t05 if you are working upon so you will be having one more thing of like this it will be coming so now afterwards what happens what i did is i went there i go to the home and then i go to the planning inputs again <coughs> I, go to, i go to the supply chain planning and then go to the planning inputs and then i have to again run the collection section because this time go that i'll be collecting something else first time i collected the items now and this time i have to collect the order orchestration reference object i normally go there whatever we go there so i will again click on on it i will go there so go to the collect planning system planning data and then in this place i will now make it as a op and then always make it as a targeted because we are not not doing everything no matter so make it as a targeted so in this place i collected this order orchestration reference object sometimes by collection it will not work means what you have to collect everything now and some systems do not I respond to these things first on a ops targeted i collect items and then i created all the three gop activities and then afterwards we come over here and then collect order orchestration reference object if it works it's fine otherwise what happens you have to collect everything again okay if it will not sensed in the sales order you have to again so after having done this what happens you have to run the last concurrent for the setup actually we have to refresh and start now go there go to this place and then i load the tools and then i go to the what schedule process that way But fortunately, they are now making a modification here. Right? So I have to do a refresh and start of your GOP area. So this concurrent now going to have maximum five minutes only. So select all the parameters. So sometimes whatever some parameters may not be popular. Select everything. So go there, keep on selecting like that. Whatever you select everything, lost and then submit it. So that way anyway. because it doesn't take much of a time so 5 minutes only that is that one if you are collecting it if you are doing everything what happens it taking a long time so that's it so this is a setup part right all of you please uh, test it and then uh, before friday evening uh, you give a post on the whatsapp group that you have completed the back to back by test fully right? including the invoice creation i'll be very happy to see this topic so uh, that way uh, what happens uh, uh i will be able to even uh, give a feedback and then i will now uh, make one more thing on the back to back transfer actually back to back transfer also i'll do by for now and then uh, always uh, keep writing to me and then if there is any problem or any issues write to me and then here whatever i show is working properly and then if it doesn't work properly you have to modify it and then do all things properly and then today we are going to begin costing actually fine we're going to see the costing we will be seeing all the three costings fine average costing the standard costing as well as your actual cost the actual cost has got two parts one is the defo and fifo so we'll be seeing all the type of costing as well as we'll more seeing the receipt accounting reconciliation also and then you know how everything and it's a very very tough topic and then uh, uh, it's actually a financial uh, activity it's not a financial activity it is a costing activity fine? cost accountants has to do but in many companies what happens they ask only the supply chain consultants to do, uh, supply chain consultants to do this costing activity so it's a very tough one Uh, it's now 6:35, and then uh, in about three hours time, 9:30, I'm going to begin the recording. So let me, we'll now soon see in costing activity. Bye for now.